Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Luke chapter 10 verse 12, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 6, and Acts chapter 3 verse 11. Let's go ahead and pray. We can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you for disciplining us in your word. God, thank you for showing us around your word. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Luke chapter 10, verse 12. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. All right. And so the thing that the Lord was showing me um, is that as we're coming into this new level in Christ, we are coming into new levels. We're coming out of a storm and into a new place in him. And we're stronger um, we're wiser, but when we are faced with rejection, we need to not take it personally, right? When we are faced with situations that we weren't expecting to be here in this new place, we need to make sure that we have the right attitude. We don't allow the spirit that's in those that reject us to get in us, Right. We need to make sure that we keep ourselves um, walled in. Remember, um, we are the walls, not the doors. We um, are, are chastened. We are a sealed garden. And we are not to allow these negative spirits, these, these demonic entities who don't want their territory to be taken. Um, we need to make sure that we're praying before we get there. Um, and when we get there, if we reject it, we need to kick the dust off their feet, off our feet, right? That's what this part of the scripture is talking about, the kicking of, of the, the clapping of the sandals, right? Um, what they would do is when a town didn't receive them, they would go to the middle or, or a house or a place that they had gone to, didn't receive them. They would go out to the middle of the street and then they would take their sandals off and they would clap their sandals together, right? To get the dust off their sandals because even the dust is not have been worthy of what you had been given, right? Um, that rejection needs to stay in that town with that town, right? Because when the judgment come, all of it is going to be consuming. You want to get it all off of you. Um, none of the remnants, none of the residue of that town will be on you and representing, you know, nothing transferred to you, right? Um, none of the judgment, none of the negative spirits, none of the anything. So they would go into the middle of the street and they would clap their shoes together. And then that was considered um, kicking the dust, getting the dust off your feet when you had been rejected. And so it says, I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town, right? And so um, if you go and you are ministering somewhere, and, and for many of you, because you have changed in the levels that you are in, your opportunities are going to change, right? You might end up actually speaking to people. You might be in a group and, and pre presented with an opportunity where the Lord is wanting you to minister to the people. Don't hesitate. Do what the Lord says. He'll make provision for you. Don't worry about everything that you're going to say as far as um, if you do speak, right, God? Now, if you're a speaker, then you need to study, right? That's something totally different. But don't worry about everything that you're going to say. Just let the Spirit of God lead you and um, read the situation as the Spirit leads you. But if there is rejection, don't worry about the rejection. You don't judge those people. You walk away from those people. You get the dust off your feet and, and you keep moving to the next assignment, to the next place, right? And, and know that God is with you. Even when you feel rejected, God is with you. Many of these rejection spirits um, can be very oppressive to your mind. You need to, um, if you stop, if the Lord shows you something that looks foreign or strange or demonic in, in its nature, 
um, you can bind it. Um, you can, by faith, you, you have to learn how to battle and war in the spirit. See these entities. And I hate to say it just blatantly and outright, but you got to take his head. You gotta, you can't just let it walk up on you and stay on you and be around you. No, if God is showing it to you, then take your sword of the spirit and by faith, take it in and, and bind up its body and send it to the lowest pit of hell and tell it, you know, you stay in this dungeon here until the day of judgment. You don't play around with these things. You speak to them, you tell Satan to get thee behind you, and you keep moving, right? You don't allow any oppressive, because it can be very, very oppressive sometimes when you are operating by the Spirit, especially when you first begin and you don't realize that you might come under heavy um, warfare demons because they don't want you to get started in your ministry. They don't want you to um, start moving forward in this area. So there will be assignments sometimes against you. And that's okay. Don't be afraid of things like that. You have to know that if you're there, then God has brought you to a level where you can cut it down, where you, you have the authority now to use your sword in these ways, because God, God is, is operating in you in power. So don't be afraid by faith. Take authority, do it and move forward and keep going. You don't have to stay in battle for a whole long amount of time, especially if you have faith in what you're doing. And the more you do it, the the easier you'll feel the instant release of that thing. That thing will flee from you. Amen. All right. And so the second scripture that the Lord gave me was, if you, let me just read the previous one one more time. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Remember, Sodom came under complete destruction. So just kick the dust off your feet and keep moving forward. Amen. When you are rejected. Um, Ephesians chapter six, verse six not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from heart. So God's will um, is being done in our lives. He, his actual, his, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is actually being fulfilled in our lives, right? And we need to make sure that we're not just doing it out of habit, out of being seen by people remember those types of demons feed on that type of stuff when you do start operating sometimes like if if they can't get you by um by discouraging you then a lot of times they'll try to come in in the in the form of pride Right. And so because you're going to you're going to be happy and joyful and rejoicing right after you start doing it, you're like, I can do this. I can I can go. I can do these things for God. And you're going to get excited and but make sure that rejoicing stays in the Lord. Right. And be very leery of demonic spirits that want to come in as pride that want to come in and boost you up because they can't get you the other way. Right. So so make sure that you are not doing what you do to be seen. You do what you do as for the Lord and help ask God for help with that. Holy Spirit will guide your thoughts. Ask God to guide your thoughts as you um, enter into this area, because God can put the right thoughts in you. And then also, you know, you want to be filling yourself up with your word and in a very, um, very meditative um, and, and very deep worship music. I always love that because I feel like it does help so much to set your mind in the right place. It's just like when Jehoram and Jehoshaphat came to Elisha and, um, they wanted a word. And as much as he, he did not want to give them a word and he was mad at Jehoram because he didn't even worship, you know, the Hebrew God, he was doing all kind of other stuff. Um, and he rejected that part of it. But when he, when he was impressed upon because of Jehoshaphat needing the word, he went ahead and did it. So he called the musicians, 
right? He called the musicians to himself so that he can bring himself down and get in the spirit. You have to stay in the spirit, right? You have to stay in a place of peace and, and operating by the things of God, keeping your mind set on things above and not on things of this earth so you don't enter into pride, so you don't enter into being a people pleaser, um, as you're doing the work of the Lord, you're not pleasing the people. You are pleasing God, right? God sees you. God is the one who's going to be the judge and you want to get a full return for your work and not be, um, not be doing it and getting paid here on earth right? Because you're, you're operating in pride and you're not going to be able to fully do your work the proper way if you operate in pride and as a people pleaser. And so it says not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ. That's why we do what we do. We are bond servants of Christ, just like, um, a slave would be, a a servant to a master. That's how we, need to be in service we need to um, go forth and realize that our pay is somewhere else right our pay is being laid up for us right Christ already gave us eternal life and that is as as much pay as we need on this side I mean God is going to bless you regardless on this side he's going to take care of you and make provision for you because you're going out doing his will but as far as um you are laying up treasure in the kingdom, right? So just know that, yeah, you're a bond servant of Christ. You're doing your duty, but this is not without reward, right? You are, you are an unworthy servant, but God is still blessing you. So we don't do it for high service. We don't do it as people pleasers. Those are not our motives. Always make sure you're going in and allow God and Holy Spirit to reveal your motives as you're going through these things, um, as, as he's opening these doors for you. And then it says doing the will of God from the heart, from the heart. We want to do his will um, from a, a beautiful place place as 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 an oil and as as a a beautiful perfume unto him we are giving as unto him like you're giving you have a beautiful gift in your hand and you want to give it to the father and the way that you're giving it to the father is by ministering the word by telling people that god loved them by praying for the sick by laying hands on them by doing the will of God, not so people can see you, but as as bond servants doing the will from the heart, right? Not not as not not to be seen or people pleasers, all right. So be weary of leery of those um those types of spirits that might appear as you are getting excited about the things of God and and moving forward in the things of God, you know, the enemy, he wants to come in, right? He does not want you to do what he wants you to do. So he wants to put a foothold in any way, shape or form. Ask God to help keep your mind, ask God to help keep you from these types of motives um, and, and spirits that that want to try to come in as God is opening these doors. And then also the third verse was Acts chapter three, verse 11 that he gave us. Um, it's while he clung to Peter and John, all the people utterly astounded ran together to them in the portico called Solomon. So we've had this scripture for a, a few times and, but it means I'm totally different now when they're completed this way. It is basically saying that prophetically it's saying that when people see the things that you are doing they're going to run to God right when people see that you're not doing it to be seen but the the natural um thing that's going to happen as you begin to operate in the things of God is that other people are going to see and their souls are going to be one so you may be thinking that oh I'm praying for this person right but you don't realize the catch is might be one of the people that's around. They might get hooked while you're while you're throwing this net out around this person. And so while you're doing that, 
other people are watching. And even if they never say anything, their heart has run to Christ in seeing what you're doing, right? They might go home and say, Lord, I need you, right? And they might get on YouTube and look for a sermon or something. And then God has gotten them. God is drawing them. God is wooing them. And then they might wake up on that Sunday and go to church. And then they, they'll, they'll be moved by the spirit to begin to, to receive his spirit and operate by his spirit as well. So when you're doing these miracles, no, it's not just to help that person, but that others may see and glorify. God. Others may see these miracles and this prayer that you are doing and operating by, and they begin to glorify God and say, I can do this thing too. I can operate. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. I can tell people. I can be a witness, right? And so we can do those things and operate by the Spirit and know that God is, you know, taking us to new levels in this thing. And we have to be open to it. But we also need to be cautious um, not to take offense when we're rejected, as well as not to operate in pride, being people pleasers or to be seen. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for new levels in you. Thank you for showing us that you are more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Lord God, we thank you for the prophetic word in season, Lord. We thank you for it out of season. We thank you for it just so that we can have it planted in our hearts. Lord God, help us to cultivate it and not let the enemy come in and steal it. Lord God, we praise you. We bless you. We ask you to forgive us for our sins and help us to, to operate in your love, operate in peace in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys. If you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way um, and he's going to bless your path. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So begin to seek his face today while he may be found. Amen. Also, um, one of the things that Christ wanted us to not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. Um, also, go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.